Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Hello and welcome back to another podcast. Um, I'm going to just, I have to preface this this recording with, um, I have a cold again. I don't know. I don't get sick. And then I have been hit with it twice now, like right after the one, right after the other. And, but the show must go on. So I'm apologizing up front uh, for my voice and the way I sound, but um, I've got work to get done. So I'm, I'm kind of, I love, I have shared before and I've asked you guys before um, to send in your questions or things you want to hear or know or answers, um, things I can answer on the podcast, anything and everything goes. So it doesn't have to be, I mean, it can be anything. And I recently got a question uh, that I wanted to answer here on the podcast because I have always said, if one person has a question or a thought or whatever, usually at least three other people do. And, um, so I like to share, I will never share your name or anything, but, uh, I just, I think these are helpful and I think more than, you know, one person deals with this or has these issues or has these questions. And so, um, the podcast is a great place to kind of answer them at a more, on a more broad, you know, so more people can, can hear it and, and hopefully benefit from it. So, The question reads, I would love to hear from you how you store the goodies that you have, but you don't have on display. Um, If they exist, she said, Uh, I have items in boxes because I don't have spots to put them, but our standard pieces like wooden spools, um, et cetera, but forget about them because they are packed away. Would love any tips for someone for would love any tips on how to store items for easy decorating or at least organize decorating. So I love this question. I love this question. So first of all, um, so I did, I did speak with her. I sent her some voice messages back, um, and kind of, um, answered her. And then she came back and thought, oh my gosh, I thought like people like you who are posting, you know, decorating all the time on Instagram and on your blog and everything just had like an endless, like a showroom of, of pieces of, you know, decorating pieces and all those kinds of things. So, so I'm just going to kind of answer and go over the things that I shared with her. Number one, there are people that are sharing their homes and decorating um, ideas and stuff that have, you know, storage units full of decorating stuff. But, but I am somebody that is, um, it is very true. I do have to um, stage items and take photos and, um, you know, so I do decorate a lot and I redecorate a lot, but that is something that is organically or is me. Um, that's kind of how all of this whole My Creative Days started. I am somebody that gets bored easily. And so I'm constantly redecorating, revamping rooms, finding ways to organize a room better. Um, you know, we started flipping houses because it just got to the point where I couldn't do much more in our house. And so I was able to do those kinds of things in flip houses. So with that being said, um, I do not, I am not somebody, I am somebody that decorates a lot for what I do for work and for just my own, like, you know, home and living. But I am not somebody that is going to just store a bunch of things to be storing a bunch of things, if that makes sense. So I am also somebody that um, will constantly and will forever um, be hunting and looking for items. And I just, the thrill of the hunt is so fun. And so if I have a thrifting day or I'm, I'm heading out to yard sales or something, that is something that I'm always going to do. It's a hobby for me. It's something I enjoy. And when I find things there, I pick them up. But a rule that I've learned over the years, and, I, and I've shared this, this is kind of, you know, these are all the things that I shared with her is that number one, we do not live in a huge home and we do not have a lot of storage in the home we live in, which has honestly been really good for me because I am somebody, I do not get attached to items um, very easily. And when I bring something in, I, my rule is something else has to go out at least one thing. I try to push myself with two. Um, 
Now, granted, uh, I do now have an online shop where I, sh- um, where I, um, sell vintage, um, items, home decor and stuff because I was, you know, doing those shopping hauls and everything. And people were asking, can I buy those? Can I buy that? And so I've actually, um, started this shop because, um, I got a lot of interest in that. And it's been so much fun because I am actually able to pick up more items, you know, than I normally would for myself because I get to shop for other people. So I have that. And then I am always looking for new items to stage and, you know, do videos on and all the, all of that for content in my job. So I'm constantly repurposing things and redecorating. And so I feel like I'm somebody that maybe does it a little bit more often than the normal person, but but yet I am constantly rotating things out. So we also host sales here at our house twice a year. And so um, it's kind of like a fun way for me to quote unquote set up a shop without having the overhead. I have an email list of people that like to come early. And so we have a shop night and get to visit with people and they get to come shop the items. And so there's that. So I just kind of want to give a backstory for what I do and, and how I do this. But like I said, this was me before all of this My Creative Days thing started. And so if you can get in the habit um, number of, of, of just giving yourself a rule, if something comes in, something has to go out. And so, um, you know, when you are shopping for items like I am, you know, you're thrifting them, you go to estate sales, you go to antique stores, whatever it is, those are like, you know, you feel like they're treasures and they're one of a kind things. And they are, they are. Like everything in our home has a story. You know, you can't just walk into a Target and buy it, you know, um, it's just they're found items, right? I've curated the and decorated our home in a way everything's found and everything, you know, has a story or a backstory. But I don't which which makes those all of those things that I find and I want to display them, right? Or I want to have them out and I want to enjoy them and um to just have them stacked or put away in a box, they're not that special. They're not that treasured. They're just stuff I'm accumulating accumulating in a box to store away in a box somewhere. So I, I I just tried to think about the items in your home and honestly decorate with the things that you love the most and everything else can go. So with that being said, I'm not saying, you know, me and her were talking about, she's always going to, you know, she loves the thrill of the hunt as well. She's going to go out. But if something new comes in, something old has to go out. So when I'm thrifting or I'm at an antique store and I find something, I have I I'm it it it's a process like I stand there and figure out what you know, where I would like this piece to go, where I see this piece, you know. And then I picture it in our home and I know exactly where it's going to go and I know the exact thing that's going to have to leave if I bring this thing home. So that helps in the buying process, right? Um, so if it's going in our home, I know something else has to leave. So it can be a piece of furniture. It can be something hung on the wall. It can be just a decor piece like it, you know, so, but I know something else has to leave. So right there at the point of, you know, purchase or putting it in my cart, I know I have to make a decision about what's coming out because I'm not going to bring this thing home and just store it to say that I found another great wood bowl or a, you know, whatever it is that you're picking up. Just to say, I found another one, so I'm just going to throw that in the tote underneath the steps and store it away. If you think about that, and when you kind of process that, I hope that that kind of, if you get into that thought process, why bring it home if it's just going to live in a tote? And on the flip side of that, if you bring this bowl home or this, you know, basket that you love, whatever it is that you're finding, and you know that, you know, you're going to set it, whatever, on a mantle or on a, you know, coffee table, and you know there are other things on that mantle or coffee table that are then going to be stored in a box and put away. What is the what is the reasoning behind that? Because it's a treasured piece or because you found that piece? Again, I get it. And I did tell her, I'm not saying that you have to just take all these things to your local Goodwill and just get rid of them. I would definitely, I mean, if you have enough items, host a sale, put them on Facebook Marketplace, you know, let your friends and family know you're selling some things. Uh, d- try and get some money out of them for sure. But to just store them in a tote to say you have more stuff um, doesn't mean that they're treasures. It doesn't, 
you know, it's just accumulating more stuff, if that makes sense. Because if it's a treasured piece, you know, I found this great basket and I know exactly where it's going to go. And I have another vintage picture or something there. But I know I now want the basket is more of the vibe I'm going for in our home or like I'm trying, I'm, you know, changing styles or I just kind of want this look. I know that vintage picture is going to have to go. Um, that basket is now what I'm treasuring and in, in, in the direction I'm going in and the new vibe I want. Um, and so that vintage picture is going to have to find a new home. It's not going to find a new home under my storage or in my back room or in a tote somewhere because to be completely honest, I know that vintage vintage picture is not going to come back out again. Um, I'm kind of over that phase or I'm not, you know, really into that anymore. And this basket came in and that's kind of what I'm going for. I know that vintage picture is not going to see the light of day again or find another place for that vintage picture to go without cluttering your home and making it look like a st- overly stuffed antique store or, you know, if it's not antiques, whatever kind of store. Do you know what I'm saying? So I really encourage you and I encouraged her to, if you have a bunch of decor pieces um, in totes, in a storage area, in your home, wherever that is, start taking those boxes and totes out one by one and going through them. And really have a conversation with yourself about why is this stored away? Why is this piece not out? Um, You know, obviously holidays are different. You may have a couple of totes for holiday decor and stuff, and that's totally different. That's like a seasonal thing. There is a time and place for those things throughout, you know, at different points in the year. So I'm not talking about holiday and seasonal items. I'm talking about strictly, like she said, you know, decor pieces that you can use all year round. Um, Now, I did ask her if she is somebody that creates content online. So if you are a you know, a creator, you have an Instagram account, YouTube, a, a website, and you're sharing these decorative decorative things and um, kind of like I do, you may have a need to have a few, you know, pieces in the wings. Maybe you're somebody that flips furniture and you have some styling pieces that are not really in your home, but yet you like to use them to style or to stage your pieces um, when you're taking photographs. In that case, I would I would try, I told her to, um, you know, like an open shelving, if you have that, an area like that in your storage area or in a closet where you can have your, you know, like an area for candlesticks are all stacked together, an area for baskets are all put together. Um, if it's, you know, little dishes or ironstone pieces, you kind of have a little shelf for them. Um, but they're all kind of out and easily and readily accessible for when you are staging or, you know, you're taking photos for your website or whatever it is. But it's not totes and totes and totes of stuff shoved in a closet or shoved under the stairs or your little storage area where you never see them. The problem is a lot of creative people, um, you, you're visual. You are visual. We are visual. That's me. Um, and I need to see the things I have in order for me to use them, which has over the years made me even purge even more. So I am somebody that I organize and purge like everything in our house multiple times a year. Um, and so, but then, you know, after I purge and get rid of things we aren't loving or using anymore, I know when I put things back, I have to see the things that I have in order for me to use them. So that means I need clear totes. I need clear jars in my office. I need, you know, even in Gabrielle's little art area, I want everything out kind of or in clear containers so she sees what she has, so she uses them. If you have totes of decor pieces that are just, you know, stuffed away, you can't see really what's in them and you kind of forget about them, they will never come out again. They will never see the light of day. So I did encourage her to, you know, make it fun. You don't have to do every single tote or every single closet that you have all in one day. But, you know, on the weekend, take out one tote at a time and just go through that tote, have an empty box next to you, next to you and be really honest with yourself about, you know, is this something I'm going to use again? I'm going to bring out again. Yeah, it was so fun when I found it, how I found it. 
the little amount that I paid for it, could I get some good money for this? Could I, you know, you can, if you have an Etsy or, uh, well, Etsy, obviously, but like eBay, if you sell on Macari, there's so many online um, sites that you can sell on right now too. Um, just be real honest about it. Ask yourself those kinds of questions. Would I rather have the 50 bucks or do I just want to store this item underneath, you know, my stairs and my storage area and just have it sitting there, you know, knowing it's not going to come out? Or would I rather have the 50 bucks and start saving up for a vacation that we really want to take? So I just think a lot, I, I love these kinds of questions and I honestly would love to come in everybody's homes and like help you organize and go through that thought process. But and I know it's simpler for some people than it is others. And I know um, for me, it's just been over the years, I'm not emotionally attached to things. Um, even things that there are, like I've always said, there's always, there are a couple pieces in my home that I would never sell. Um, they are, one of them is a huge like piece of furniture. When I say huge, it's just like a wood hutch that my mom refinished. Like it is something that I use every day. Another thing is a pitcher that, um, it's like an ironstone pitch. I don't think it's ironstone, but it's really old. It is a pitcher that my dad remembers drinking. There was always grape juice in it at his uncle. It was his uncle Joe's house. I'm trying to remember. So was it my great or was it his great uncle? Anyway, it's a great, great uncle's pitcher. And it was always, it always had grape juice in it. And that's what he remembered. So I have that, but it's out on display. I fill it with greenery, you know, in the winter and then, you know, different sprigs in the summer. Or I've put just like candlesticks in it, but it's out on display at all times. Those are kind of, those are a couple of pieces in my home that I, I won't ever get rid of, but everything else is getting changed or like I find something better or I, and so it, and so, you know, it, it can go while I'm replacing it with other things that I find. So I want to encourage you, do not, I mean, I can, you, you can take it all the way, depending on what your, I know everybody has different, you know, like I said, if you're a creator and you're, you have all this content to, to, to create with decorating and all of that, it's going to look different. But if you're somebody that just loves the thrill of the hunt, um, has a bunch of, you know, things that you have found, but yet they're just in boxes and they're just, you forget about what's in there. Have a real honest conversation with yourself. Take those totes, boxes, whatever they're in, out and start going through them. You can start an online shop. You can start an Instagram shop. Start start selling those items. You can do it on Etsy, eBay, Macari, like I said before. Um, maybe you decide that you have enough that you could actually, you know, do a side hustle with selling these finds. Um, maybe you just, you have enough that you can host a bigger sale and, and sell the stuff that you have. Um, but then if you decide that you're going to keep the items, then again, be real honest with yourself and figure out a way that you can see those items. So you're not forgetting about them. And then you can rotate the items out, but be honest and ask yourself this question. Am I just storing stuff to store stuff? If you're just storing them just to say you have 15 wood bowls or, you know, 17 amazing antique baskets, those are just the two things that are coming to my mind. They're they're horrible um, examples. But like, why are we just storing those things? Why aren't they being used? Um, and maybe it's when you're pulling these things out, you decide, you know, everything else in your house that you, you've got in there, you've got enough to decorate and all your rooms will look brand new and all the things that were in those rooms and decorating using or decor pieces, those can all go. Like maybe it's a, a weekend of just redecorating with all the things you have in the totes, bring them out. Bring them out. But see, I'm saying that and I pause because you also don't want your home to look like an overstuffed, you know, antique store or a, um, you know what I mean? Like really cluttered. Less is more. But if these are truly treasures that you have stored away underneath the, the stairs or in a closet, um, ask yourself why they're being stored away. If they're truly treasures, they should be out. You should be decorating with them. And then, you know, maybe there's some other things in your home right now that aren't 
quote unquote tre- treasures that could that could go. So I love this question. I I could talk on on and on about this. It just came in this week, so I wanted to record this podcast. Um, because I know a lot of people struggle with this. And like I said earlier, I know it's easier for some people than others. For me, it is super simple for me to, you know, find something amazing in a thrift store or an estate sale and come home and know that those uh, there's other things that have to go and get rid of them easily. Now, I used to decorate for every holiday and I did have totes of not like 17 totes for St. Patty's Day and 18 totes for Easter and Christmas is my biggest one, but even that, I've pared it down really because I just, it's just simpler. It just, I think it looks better. I just, over the years, I have, it has gotten easier and easier and easier for me to let go of things, not buy things in excess. Um, so, so I've been there where, I guess I shouldn't say I've been there where I'm like just buying things and just storing them away because I've never been that person, but I have. I have, like now, I think more and more people will ask me, oh my gosh, how do you get rid of that? How are you able to, you know, purge twice a year and like get rid of things? And um, it, it's just, it's just become just so much easier. Um, and and I, I, I promise you, the more and more you do it, the easier and easier it gets. And because our lives change and the seasons we're in change, right? You go from having little kids, they grow up. Um, and then, you know, you're, you're taking more vacations or maybe you're taking less vacations or you're like your needs and your wants change, right? As we, as we go through the years and we go through different seasons. And so sometimes, like I tell people, depending on what season they're in, maybe you would, you're really wanting to take more vacations or you're really wanting to send your kids to that certain school, or you're really wanting to pay for dance lessons and, you know, have your kids go through gymnastics and, you know, all of those things cost a lot of money. And so those things that are just taking up space, they become, you know, it's just, they're taking up, you know, prime real estate in your home. Um, and that's all they're doing. They're just taking up space where they could be turned into money. You could sell them, you know, and pay for those things that you're wanting to do. So I do think, a lot of this is a total mind shift and just thinking in things in a different way. It's also 100%, you you have to be honest with yourself, um, which is the hardest with the stuff you're hoarding or keeping, um, you know, just stored away. Um, so you have to be honest and then just, you know, you will find things again Uh, But just, you know, moving things along if you're not using them and you're not loving them and don't just store them away. So again, like I said, I could go on and on about this, but I do have this cold and I'm sure this sounds crazy and my voice sounds crazy. So I'm going to stop this here. But as always, I love to hear from you um, about the podcast. Let me know um, other topics or questions or things like this um, that I could come in here and talk to you about because... it's having a podcast so I don't, it's so much easier to talk uh, about some of these things instead of writing them out in a blog post or on social media. It's super fun for me. So email me at lindsay at mycreativedays.com. You can always reach out to me on Instagram at mycreativedays as well um, with your podcast suggestions or questions or um, ideas. I would, I love hearing from you. So, and like I said, if you have the question or the thought or need the help in an area more, people need it as well. So um, please send them in. Okay. I'm going to go have some hot tea. I hope you have a great day. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, I sometimes feel like I get, I get excited about certain topics and I kind of go off, you know, in different directions. So if you need me to expand on something or, you know, clarify something, message me, email me. I'd love it. I need that too. So I would be happy to come in and clarify more or do another podcast about it. If there's something more specific about the topic that you want to hear about or help with, I am here to do that. So have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you guys soon, hopefully with a more normal voice. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. 
I love having creative chit chats with you. And my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here. And I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.